Hi there, my name is James Myers. I'm a voice teacher based outside the Washington, D.C. area, and this is my student. Uh, my name is William Choi. Where are you going to college, William? Uh, I'm going to Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. Fabulous. And uh, what uh, degree are you going to be working towards? Um, I'm going to be chasing my degree in a BFA for musical theater. Fantastic. Great. So this is just a video. We're going to be working on different vocal concepts, the ideas of vibrato, the idea of belting for the male voice, specifically for musical theater, and also singing in a more classical style or a legit style for musical theater, and how we can kind of color the voice depending on the style that we want to achieve. So we're going to begin with some warm-ups and then we'll be working on some different repertoire as well. So thanks so much for watching. Let's do some singing. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's just start with um, we oh we oh we. Can we do? We oh we oh we oh we oh. It's a good sound. I'm hearing a little bit of we uh, which is not a bad sound in and of itself, but if we can get a little bit more of the we oh, uh, so that means you're going to round the lips. It's a little bit more of a classical sound, but rather than we oh, we oh, we oh, we oh, we oh, we oh, we so really sort of exaggerate that oh vowel for now if you can. I think it helps keep the, the throat a little bit more open. Now, be careful as you're alternating between these pitches that you're not bobbing the head. It's not that we want the head to stay so stiff. We definitely don't want that. You want to keep a feeling of looseness and flexibility. But try to pick a vocal point, a visual point, that's right straight ahead of you and try to keep the head from bobbing as you do that. Try that once again. We oh, we oh, we oh, we oh, we So we want to avoid we oh we oh we oh we oh we where it kind of goes back a little bit. It doesn't have to be a big sound by any means, but keep it trying to project the sound out, keep it forward, and make sure the tongue stays loose and flexible. We oh we oh we oh we oh we 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 for that last note. You know, and William is um, very much a tenor. We're going to be showing his uh, wonderful high range later on. But even for tenors, when you're singing in the lower part of the range, sometimes we feel that we have to dig for it and really just try to keep the sound unobstructed, let the natural volume be there, try not to push. That actually resonated a little bit louder than when you were trying to make it a little darker. Do it one more time, we'll go a little lower. Okay. <laughs> So we'll be real precise with that. Sometimes if we're having trouble finding a specific sound, what we can do with this same exercise uh, is we can go back and forth between O and uh. O is one of our pure Italian vowels, but uh is a sound that we often have to sing when singing in English and certainly in musical theater. So can we try this? Can we do... <clears throat> Alternating between 
between O and O. So, and again, ooh is not a bad sound at all. It's a sound we often sing, but we want to be very intentional about the vowel sound. So, rather than ooh, ah, oh, 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 ah,
is the weaker part of their voice. And for William, as I think a he's a natural tenor, uh, it just happens to, and this isn't the case for all, you know, sort of natural or high voice tenors, but for him, the falsetto is a little bit more challenging, you have to work at it, but the mix, you're very fortunate, has generally been there, and we've cultivated it over the years of, of working together. Um, and for myself, so William is very much a tenor, I myself am a baritone, so when I sing that same scale, it's going to be a little louder. Uh, the trade-off is, of course, I can't go nearly as high as William, he's, he's got wonderful uh, high range there. But um, th there is a difference in timbre, of course, between myself as a baritone and, and William as a tenor. Um, so what would happen, I, so I personally like that quality, and I think that's the more healthy way to do it. If you can mix it, certainly keep it well supported. But for more modern musical theater, sometimes it approaches a little bit more of a pop quality. So what would happen if you were singing in more of a pop style, the same scale in an aval? Could you demonstrate that? Um, I think so. Okay. Um, yeah, a little bit more chest voice connected. So rather than mixing it as much, give me keep the chest voice a little bit more present, and perhaps you know vowel modification for you know the cover. We're approaching. This is an F sharp. So I'm going from ah uh to ah, uh, particularly as a baritone, because for F sharp that's approaching the upper part of the range. But even for a tenor, for singing classically, you want to go from ah uh to ah. Uh. Now for pop that modification might not be as extreme. You might hang on to the pure ah sound a little bit longer when singing in a pop style. So see if you can hold on to that open ah just a little bit longer. And again, we want to caution, you know, your vocal health is the most important thing. So if you find in your singing that modifying this vowel towards an ah uh is feeling more comfortable for your voice, then by all means do that. But for certain repertoire styles, we sometimes do want a little bit more of an ah. So see if you can keep it a little bit more open. And again, don't mix quite as much. Go for a little bit more what's sometimes referred to as a belted quality. Okay. Even for a male voice. Try that. I'll, I'll play the scale first. Good. Can you give me like 5% more volume? I like that quality, so it's yeah. nice and open, but it didn't sound strained. Give me 5% more volume with that same color. and just so the listener can hear a little bit more of a covered sound, so a little bit more of an uh or ah sound to the ah uh vowel on top, and trying to mix it a little bit more with a head voice. sail through it, but if you can make sure the vibrato is still spinning through that top note, try not to get stuck or try not to make the top note straight tone uh, if you can. Let's come back down here and work our way back up. So this is the B flat, approaching the B flat. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> Sometimes we surprise ourselves, and, and William is certainly very fortunate in the terms of the range he has. But something that we continue to work on is ways to project the voice, but in a healthy way, because we don't want to force the voice, and particularly for, you know, at no age do we want to do that, but particularly for young singers, uh, you know, because uh, William is uh, going to be, is, is a college uh, musical theater freshman, so he's going to have a long career ahead of him, and we want to make sure that we're establishing good vocal habits so that you can be singing uh, for decades to come. Good, so another um, exercise that we like to do for exploring the upper range is, uh, I, I know you know this one, let's do the... Um... <laughs> Second note, 
try to engage the vibrato. Don't let that be too straight. <clears throat> But in the interest of this video, I think we'll now go on to rapid form. So very good. Okay. Kind of like explore, like look it up, like what mixed voice really truly is. Right. And I mean, we can say a little bit even here that when the voice mixes and it incorporates a little bit of the head voice, we're talking about the vocal folds, the vocal cords. They're elongating. They're getting a little longer but thinner. And that allows them to vibrate a little bit more quickly. So if the vocal folds remain too short and fat, that's fine for when they're in the low range and they're vibrating at a slower rate. But as we ascend the scale and the, vo the vocal folds vibrate more quickly, they need to stretch and thin. And I think that you're very fortunate and that's a very natural, comfortable position for you. But for a lot of singers, that can feel very foreign at first, particularly for sometimes lower voices or voices that have just changed because it's like the voice drops, particularly for, you know, if the voice is, you know, just changed, um, you know, around the early, you know, teen years, 13, 14, all of a sudden they have this low baritone or bass range, but it takes a while for them to rediscover the head voice part of the range and to, you know, realize their potential tenor range, if in fact that's what they're going to be. Yeah. All right, here's You'll Be Back from Hamilton.
Well, you have a really nice job. I particularly like the, um, the vibrato you had on the very um, last held high note. I thought you did that particularly well. So um, I didn't want to stop. I wanted to go through this without stopping just to let you do the whole song. And uh, I wanted to, so when you go up, there's a section in the middle here where you do a riff and it's alternating between B naturals and Cs. And for on, on uh, Broadway, I believe the singer does it typically um, utilizing falsetto. Yeah. Um, and you sort of using that lighter mixed voice, but we've also played around with um, singing it a little bit more full out. So I'm, I want to say that there's nothing wrong with doing that section in falsetto, there's nothing wrong with doing it in mixed voice, there's nothing good or wrong about doing it in full voice, but just for a different color, let's experiment with doing it in full voice and uh, see um, what that sounds like, what that feels like. Let me find that one moment. Really tight that. One, two, ready, and... You say a love is strange, you can't go on. You be the one complaining when I am gone. Nice. So would you say that was more in the full voice there? Yeah, definitely. Nice. Could you even open up the vowel sound a little bit? So right now it's more of a covered position, which typically is what you want, but I'm curious if we could get a little bit more awe vowel present uh, in the word awe. It can't go on. So for me, that's a little high. I can't do it in my full voice, sadly. Those, you know, B naturals, high C as a baritone, it's a little out of my range. But what I'm trying to demonstrate with the falsetto there is rather than on, which is kind of more of a classical sound, That ah, uh, I think will work for this more contemporary musical theater piece, and it's almost a little, you know, borderline rock sound there a little bit. So um, really, uh, give it a little bit more vocal support, maybe two percent more volume if you can muster it. I think really good ah vowel on there, and really good opening phrase right there. So one, two, ready, breathe. Excellent, good. And how would you, was there any difference at all between what you were doing earlier or if you were mixing more and then doing it a little bit more full voice this way? How can, can you, I know it can be hard to describe it with words, but if you had to, how would you describe the difference? I think the first time that we went through it, it was definitely like, um, I was definitely relying on my like head voice, yeah. kind of like my mixed voice, but it was turning into kind of like a lighter and like maybe falsetto sound. Yeah. And I don't think I was like supporting as much. Um, but in the second time we did it, like the first time before you gave him the note on the, you know, like, ah. Yeah. Uh, um, it did felt more supported. Um, and then after the notes of like, you know, um, two more volume and also, um, like the rock kind of tone. Yeah. I definitely felt more confident in it. And I actually did like the sound much better because it had like a nice kind of pain to it, I think. Excellent. No, and it really resonated in the room, I think, much more clearly. So sometimes there's a little bit more risk with, you know, engaging a little bit more of the full voice there. It can be a little scary. But assuming you're feeling healthy and, you know, well prepared, I think that's the way to go. Now, again, if you're having a day, and we all have days as performers where maybe the voice isn't at 100%, you know, by all means, use the lighter quality, mix it, use falsetto. Yeah. That's certainly what I would do as a baritone if I was singing this. But, you know, assuming you're feeling good, I would go for that more full voice sound. And again, I think using the ah vowel, you know, we think of the word ah, that's the word that you're singing. It's spelled O-N, and sometimes you think, oh, I gotta sing an O or an uh, but really mixing an ah vowel in there will really open up the sound in a good way, I think, for this style and for this particular phrase of this, of this song. Um, excellent, good, good, um, let's see, let's go to something else in here. Um, let's work the ending, even though I thought, I thought the ending was sounding good. Um, <clears throat> let's see where to get into it. Um, oh yeah, I want to do a little bit before that, so the cola voce on page five. And ever, and ever, and ever. So that definitely should be lighter, softer, cola voce. 
Um, but don't let it be so soft that it disappears. Okay. And I would say try to keep a little bit of vibrato engaged too, a little bit of a shimmer there. And yeah, let me, let me hear what happens. So let's see, where did it start? Oh, how about, yeah, how do we do it? So top of page five, forever and ever. Right there, one, two, three, four. And actually, something we should probably mention for you know anyone viewing this, um, you're doing a little bit of a character voice, right? Yes. Right. So who who are you singing as? I know most everyone knows this. Everyone knows Hamilton. But what, what, what character are you singing? I'm singing King George. And um, can I just say like why I love this song? No, please. Yeah, yeah. Anything you want. Yeah. Whenever I do the voice, it's like just doing like a King George voice. Right. First time I was like, oh, I'm King George. Mm -hmm. But it's like there's something about the song that says like an X. Mm. The evil ex trying to come back. Yes. And it's like, you know, um, like, he'll be back. Mm -hmm. like, time will tell. Like, I, I served you, like, I helped you, so you're gonna come back to me. And it's like that ex that's like snobby. It really so, is. It's, it's a I very have, specific, because there are many, obviously, many um, different dialects um, of English accents. Yeah. Cockney, received pronunciation, and so many others. Any, you know, every region has slight variation. Um, but yes, you're going for a very snooty, accent and played it up um, so to kind of find the humor of the piece, which I think is a great uh, choice. And something we've talked about in lessons is just making sure that as we play up the humor, that we're not constricting the throat, we're still keeping the sound unobstructed and free. But for listeners, if you hear vowel choices that might sound a little strange, sometimes it's really because we're playing up the humor yeah. of the King George voice, but we're making sure that the throat is staying nice and open. So if you were singing you know, more of a classical song or legit musical theater piece, Rodgers and Hammerstein, you know, or even let, let's say you're playing um, <clears throat> My Fair Lady, it wouldn't be this type of British accent, oh, yeah. it would be a bit different. All right, let's, uh, let's do that again, I like that, so. <clears throat> Forever, one, two, three, four. It's a little bit, you're sliding into the G a little bit, oh, and okay. it's a matter of taste. Sometimes for a pop musical, we want a little bit of that slide. But what would happen if we hit it a little bit more cleanly, if you got right to the center of the pitch on the G without as much of a slide? Let me hear what that would sound like. If we like that better, worse, or the same. Um, let's start in. I will fight the fight and win the war. Start right there, one, two. I will fight the fight and win the war. I still think you can get to the gone a little yeah. faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you, um... <clears throat> gone, 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 gone! Gone, 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 gone! Good, can you do it even rapid, more rapid fire? Gone, 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 gone! Yeah, and hold the last one out and vibrate a little bit. Gone, 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 gone! Gone, 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 gone! Yeah. Gone! Gone! When you're gone, I'll go mad. When you're gone, oh. when so, you're gone, oh, I still want to. And so you're used to sliding, and again, it doesn't sound bad. It is not a bad sound. It's a stylistic choice, but we want to be able to do it both ways. And I think if you can get right to it, I think it might even be a little bit more exciting. Again, it's a little riskier. Yeah. When you're gone, gone, but <laughs> try to go right to it. Gone. Maybe I'll keep that in. When you're gone, when you're gone, when you're gone, 
I'm kind of mixing a little bit more when I do it that way. But regardless of whether you mix it, you sing it louder with more full voice, get right to it. Don't hedge your bet by sliding into it. Okay. Um, tell you what, wait, we're gonna do the whole phrase, but let's first do When you're gone, I'll go mad. When you're gone, when you're gone, 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 when you're gone, when you're gone, that's the one. When you're gone, you're so don't always sing with her. Cause when push comes to shove, I will kill your friends and family. Excellent. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Now, um, not so much a vocal technique thing, but a style thing. Can you even slow it down a little bit more? I will kill your friends and family. Okay. Even, I mean, really enjoy that because it's obviously, you know, the humor. It's so, um, you, we got the sweet song. It's such a beautiful melody. And then you're saying you're going to kill your friends and family. So we want to really stretch that out and kind of play up the humor. We don't want to sing it too fast. I mean, yes, people know the song. Everyone's seen Hamilton. But we don't want, you know, let's imagine someone hasn't seen it or someone's seen it for the first time. Right. Let's really uh, make sure they don't miss uh, this line. So, yeah. I will. Right there. I will kill your friends and family. So, Carol. Yeah, no, that's okay, that's okay. And actually, a point I want to make is sometimes, yeah, definitely get some water. Sometimes when we sing more slowly, inadvertently, we sing more softly. So we want to make sure that whether you're singing, you don't sing louder when you sing faster, you don't sing softer when you sing slower. You can, but it's not automatic that's what happens. You want to control the volume and the speed separately so you can make it work. So sing this slowly, but give me a little bit more volume. I will kill your friends and family. Okay. Um. I will kill your friends and family to remind you of my love. It's much better. So that, again, and you know, volume is relative, but you don't want to be so soft that you know, yes, you know, if you were in the production, you obviously would have a microphone, but I always think it's important to, cha to train to sing in an acoustical setting when you don't have a microphone, being able to project your voice so you can sing softly but still be heard by someone in the back row uh, without a microphone. So that was good. That was perfect. So let's see if we can now combine these different things. So, when you're gone, I'll go mad. Right there. When you're gone, I won't go Yeah, absolutely. Let's try it. When you're gone, I'll go mad. So don't throw me sing we had. Cause when push comes a shove, I will kill your friends and family to remind you of my life. Keep going. Excellent. Oh my gosh. So we're going to end on a high note with that one. So good. Let's go on to another song. Okay. <clears throat> All right, William, what are we going to sing? Uh, we're going to be singing Wave Through Your Window from Dervin Hansen. Excellent. All right. So uh, let's go right to your vocal entrance. When you're ready. Again, let's let's sing it a little bit. Give me ten percent more volume, because okay. again, you know we, we've gotten so used to singing in smaller spaces, and we're in a large uh, space right now. Um, we can see you know a few hundred people in here. Um, so really project it a bit more if you can. One, two, three, four. Learn slam on the break before I even turn the key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
sing everything forte, but yeah, let's um, give me like 2% more, because I promise you, you'll still be able to sing louder when we yeah. get to the last part, so let's go from, um, on the outside, on the outside, always looking in the light, never be more than I've always been, cause I'm tired. between we don't want it to be too loud because we want the song to build but we don't want it to be too soft because again we want to make sure the voice projects and can be heard and all that good stuff now i think you're finding a good volume i still i wouldn't mind maybe two percent louder maybe okay. a little bit louder but we're in the we're in the the ballpark now i, I want to stop way way we're kind of doing the the dip thaw we're overdoing the second half of it way and, and we've talked about this before. I yeah. want you to con concentrate on singing a little bit more of the first half of that, that dip song. So way we have the A sound at the beginning of it, and then a little bit of an E vowel actually, way, if I exaggerate, we wouldn't sing it like that. But at the moment, I do feel like you're sort of giving a little bit too much of the E sound. Way, way, a little bit more of the pure A, and then the E is barely there. It's a much smaller proportion of the sound. So, Way down through a window. Um, let's see. Uh, where to begin? Uh, let's do. Um, Cause I'm tap tap. Yeah, let's do. Cause I'm tap. Oh, no, 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 let's put. Cause I'm tap tap tapping on the glass. One, two, three, four. the consonants, overdo the diction of that part. So even if you can't get a lot of volume on those low notes, step out, step. For me as a baritone, that's actually a part of the range that's easier for me. I can't do the high notes William can do, but step out, step. Easier, but if it's hard to get that much value, step out, step. You can speak it a little bit, but just make sure you give me a lot of ST sound and a lot of P sound. Just regard, so that regardless of the volume you're singing there, the, the text will still be clear. Uh, two, three, four. And no one tells me a little bit more volume. Two, three, four. And no one tells you where you went wrong. Step out, step out of the sun if you keep getting burned. Step out, step out of the sun because you learn. Because you learn. On the outside, always looking in. Never be more than I've always been. Cause I'm tired.
down. So here it gets ridiculously low. It's kind of unfair because, you know, to sing this role you have to have some, you know, decent tenor notes and then it's going down to these low A's and it's, so you often find on recordings, they, they kind of speak it a bit more yeah. in the section, right? So I, I admire you that you're, you know, trying to go for the pitches there, but let's give it a little bit more spoken quality. And again, like, like we were saying earlier, um, really spit out the text. So I would like you, as you sing this, and it's hard because it's so low, but use, feel free to speak it, use the speaking voice, use as much consonant sounds as you can get and feel like it's building, building inside of you. And I'm going to play a little softer, so, because, um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I've certainly been criticized for playing too loudly. So if you hear me playing softly, don't, don't match the piano. You still yeah. sing full out, but I'm going to play softly so you can kind of hear yourself a little bit better there. So, um, can anybody see, I'm going to start there, one, two, three, four. Can anybody see, is anybody straight tone, see if you can vibrate it. Again, you don't have to hold it super long. You, you hold it as long as you feel comfortable. That's the B flat there, it's a high note. But don't let it be too straight to vibrate it. Yes. One, two, three, four. Go for the whoa right there. It almost sounded like you were doing a, a third waving. Uh, do, wave it! Yeah, and so you have that great high mix quality on those B flats there. Now when you get back to the whoa, bring a little bit more of that chest voice in there because it's low enough that you won't hurt the voice by doing it and it'll make, give it a little bit more excitement to the sound. Whoa. I mean, I guess you, if you want a little bit more sensitive, it's an artistic choice. But let me hear just for kicks. Whoa. Whoa. Good. I, I like that volume. It's again a little delayed on the whoa. 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 Get to the whoa a little faster. Whoa. There you go. Whoa. 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 Good. And do the whoa. Do that before. So put those two things together. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, you could take 
more of a pause or more of a breath there. Oh, yeah. Whoa! 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 That's pretty good. Get the B flat a little higher, vibrate a little faster. A little 2% louder too. One, two, ready, go. That's it. Really nice. Okay, so we're going to put this together a little bit with what comes before. This could almost be like an audition cut, maybe what we're going to do now. Let's do, um, <clears throat> oh, the choice doors. <sighs> That's uh, on the third to last page. You see what that is? Uh, I try to speak, but nobody can hear. So I wait around for an answer to appear. Uh, Might be different pages for you. Um, I try to speak, but nobody can hear. Okay, gotcha. One, two, three. That's it, yeah, so a little, little bit more volume, because it's kind of the exciting part of the song, so. One, two, three. I try to speak, but nobody can hear, so I wait around for an answer to me, while I watch, 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 and be the last. Way back through in the world, can anybody see? Is anybody leaving back in me? So that's already a great one we have in the can. Um, I want you to really go for it. I want you to like fill this church. Okay. I don't want you to hurt your voice, but can you give me even more volume? I'll try to. Yeah. Risk it. Risk it a little bit. So, because we're just let's actually do. Can anybody see? Can we start right there? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Can anybody see? Is anybody leaving? Back So you have to have the courage to go for that. And that's, you know, in the beginning stages, William's a little bit past the beginning stages. Um, we always have plenty to learn. Um, but William now has the technique that he can sing in this range. The next step for you for really becoming an artist is trusting your technique. And because, you know, the previous one was not bad. It was not bad, but it was much more held back. It was much less full. You really let it go. It didn't hurt. It didn't hurt your voice. You feel comfortable, right? Yeah. It was much more exciting, and it projects. So that's the next stage for you professionally. And you're well on your way to that. So you're going to get that in no time at all. I'm very confident. But for anyone watching this, you know, you, you, you go at whatever stage you're at. You build the technique. You start with foundational pieces, and you work up to more advanced pieces. But for those of you listening, if you're at a more advanced stage, and you've built a technique over a number of years, don't be afraid to really express yourself. You know, sometimes we get scared to fully, really sing. We get so bogged down with technique, and technique is important. We spend a lot of time working on technique, don't we? Yeah. But at the end of the day, the technique serves the artistry. So you have to train the technique in such a way that it really becomes second nature so that you can then express all the wonderful feelings inside of you. So hopefully there have been some good technical things that you guys have been able to listen to and observe, but most importantly, Keep striving to be complete, full artist. Whether you're a singer, an actor, or any medium, really try to be an authentic artist at all times. Thanks so much for watching. William, thanks so much for singing, and uh, we'll do it again soon, I hope. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks.